so i have my notebook <laughs> with the timeline of the events that occurred <laughs> hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is florence and this is the learn your life crisis i am just from filming um, a q a video where i answered questions that you asked me on my instagram by now that video has already gone up which explains why I'm wearing the same things because I'm too lazy to go and change outfits. I guess quick disclaimer, if anyone clicked on the video just to get the, the quick facts about how I applied and got the job, this might not be the, the video for you. Uh, it's gonna be a longer story time sort of video with many other things from my personal life woven into that story. Anyway, now that we have that out of the way, today's video is going to be a much requested video <laughs> how i got my job at microsoft and how i ended up moving um, to the us i have tried filming this video before i will insert a clip from the time i, <laughs> I tried filming it and then um, my emotions were like <laughs> you thought you thought <laughs> so i ended up bailing I did talk about it on my Instagram, which by the way, if you don't follow me, you should, at Zilenia Life Crisis. It didn't feel, it felt as if I was cutting, cutting out aspects about that story that are front and center for me because they happened to me and they framed that whole experience. And I was like, I don't wanna just give you the half ass story um, of just the recruitment process. I would want to tell the whole entire story, including the things that were going on in my life during that period. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. <laughs> this story takes me back to 2018. 2018 was a roller coaster of a year. Whew. Off the top of my head, I became an aunt in 2018. I finished uni and graduated in 2018. What else happened in 2018? Uh, I got this job we are about to discuss in 2018. And also in the same year and around the same period I'm about to discuss, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. So you, you can imagine where the story goes down here. You can really anticipate where the story just goes. Whoo! Anyway, <laughs> why am I even laughing? This is not funny. This is how I deal with pain. I laugh it off doesn't always work uh <laughs> so august 2018 august 2018 was in my final year of uni final semester and adulting the the reality of adulting was looking me in the eye and therefore i was applying to as many roles as possible <laughs> applying to all the jobs i could possibly apply to casting my net as wide as possible and that's when i saw on our class email uh, this particular opportunity. It was uh, Microsoft hiring software engineers and program managers uh, for their program called Africa to Redmond. In fact, if you're a CS major or any other tech degree major in Africa, yes, any country in Africa, and you're in your final year of uni, keep your eyes open for the Africa to Redmond program look for it online and apply please apply you never know this could be you too because here i am and to be honest that could be you too anyway so i applied it is a very simple application just attaching your cv and filling in some personal info on a form some application form and that's it i even forgot about it to be honest i wasn't thinking too much about it so i forgot about it Fast forward to September, I receive an email inviting me for the HR interview. It happened in Strath in Nairobi. <laughs> and I was actually stunned. I was like, hmm, really? Me? You want to interview me? Okay, okay. <laughs> so I went in with like very low expectations. In fact, this entire recruitment period my expectations were very low this is how i i handle rejection and disappointment by expecting it like that's my my baseline i am expecting to be rejected i am expecting to not get the job so that when i get the job it's it's a lovely surprise instead of expecting the job and then i don't get it and then it's whew, disappointment 
<laughs> so anyway this whole time i wasn't thinking too much about it um i went in for the hr interview and it went really well it felt more like a conversation than an interview and i enjoyed myself but i also didn't want to think too much about it i didn't want to expect over expect so i kept my expectations very very low <laughs> and this is the point now i told uh, my mom about the interview i told her oh yeah baby i applied for this job at microsoft um and i just did the hr interview and it went well we didn't also discuss how the job would involve me moving <laughs> because again we weren't expecting it we weren't expecting it fast forward to october actually no before we move to october let me fill you in on a few other things that are happening in my life at the same time so like i said this was my final semester and in september my dad had come home for his annual holiday leave thing and just before he he was supposed to go back to work he used to work abroad so just before he was about to go back to work um he began getting sick and he went to hospital one thing led to another and before it we knew it he was admitted and things just spiraled out of control a biopsy was done and it was cancer stage 4 cancer and that just yeah that <laughs> that affected me like no one's business <laughs> my life just went woo october was also when i was doing my final exams for uni so the stress was high you want to finish strong in uni but like life outside of school is just <sighs> anyway i even forgot about the whole microsoft interview process by this point too many things were going on in my life i completely forgot about it so you can imagine how surprised i was when i was invited for the online technical round my dad had to travel back to work uh to get some things in order like before he comes back home for the extended sick leave so he had to fly out when he was very 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 sick and the day of my online technical interview was the day he was flying out So you got to imagine how stressful that day was. That was just <laughs> that was a ridiculous day. I went to the we went to the airport, dropped him off, um uh, came back home. My interview was at midnight because of the time difference between Kenya and Redmond. And I feel like I didn't prepare as well as I'd have liked to for this interview. But honestly, it was because my life was chaos. Pure chaos. Pure chaotic. It was just whew, Of course I prepared. By the way, when I say I didn't prepare enough, it's on my skill. I I like to over prepare. So I just prepared enough given all the things that were going on in my life. But it went well. It went well. It went as well as it possibly could have. By the way, the online technical interview for guys who are not in tech is a coding interview. <laughs> you go in, you meet the person who's interviewing you after like 2 minutes of small talk, they give you a coding question and you You walk through the coding question and write the code and you're sharing like you're sharing your screen it was on Skype and they had like a a coding window so you're sharing that coding window screen as you write the code you're explaining why you you're doing what you're doing why you're using the things you're using to solve the problem then you run the code and it should work and you test it and you fix any errors or bugs in there if there are <laughs> So anyway, I was taking longer than I would like to come up with answers and solutions and to optimize. So honestly, I felt like I was going to fail that interview given all the things that are going on in my life, but after, after the interview, actually I didn't even tell my mom that I was doing the interview on that day. I didn't even tell her about it. I, I told no one because um I didn't want to raise their expectations and then disappoint them. So, um The interview goes by um I go to sleep afterwards and I f- I forget about it like I intentionally force myself to forget about it so I don't have to think about it. And yeah, my dad comes back, um he comes back okay. Then um yeah, we begin the whole rounds of chemo and re- and radiology, radiology, radiotherapy. What would I might say? Radiotherapy and chemotherapy. And at the same time I finish uni that's still October I finish uni and get an internship elsewhere 
So now I am now adulting. <laughs> I have officially begun adulting. <laughs> so that was October. Um, in November, I get an email letting me know that I have made it past the online technical stage and they are inviting me for the on-site technical interview that was going to be held in Joburg, South Africa. What? <laughs> to put this into perspective, I had never flown before. As wild as that sounds, I had never flown before. So I was going to be flying out of the country for an interview in South Africa. What? What? <laughs> and clearly, I was not expecting it because um, my passport had expired. <laughs> I had even like forcefully forgotten about this job to avoid disappointment so <laughs> so in november it became now like we are scrambling to put things in order I'm scrambling to go and apply for the passport like the new passport um and then applying for the visa they were going to take care of everything else actually i just needed to apply for the visa for myself everything else they were taking care of so the flights accommodation food all that stuff was going to be taken care of so yeah that was november and then in december first week of december yes first week of december i flew to Joburg for my on-site interview first time flying was whew, beautiful it's a moment i'd want to relieve again the time the plane took off and i was like oh, we're in the air oh my god anyway that's besides the point so Joburg. <laughs> I landed on a Monday night and on Tuesday morning I had my interview. So I go to the Microsoft office in, in Joburg for my interviews. There were four of them, 45 minutes each, back to back. They were all coding interviews, of course. So the interviews were, were challenging, but I managed to solve all the questions I was given. In some, they give you two questions. In some, it's just one. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting... <laughs> Um, interview experience and I remember in between the the four the, the, the interview sessions we would go back outside and then there was a HR lady who was now explaining to us what to expect after the whole interview process so I remember she told us you will know about your outcome by tomorrow and I'm like wow no pressure <laughs> and then she began telling us what to expect if you do get the the offer but honestly, I wasn't listening to her much. She was showing us like where Redmond is on a map and where Seattle is and where she lives. In my head, I'm just trying to focus on the interviews. <laughs> it's like we will worry about where Redmond is when we get the job, if we get the job. Again, trying not to disappoint myself by expecting too much. Fast forward, uh, the interviews end at like maybe 1 p.m. They gave us lunch and at lunch time you know we bonded with the people we were interviewing with um, and then i went back to my hotel and i remember after i got back to the hotel maybe a, a few hours later i went to the mall and then came back anyway i got a meeting invitation like a virtual online meeting invitation and it was me and a hr person and the meeting was 30 minutes long so I asked myself, would they really be scheduling like a 30 minute meeting to tell me I didn't get the job? Hmm. But again, I didn't want to over expect and then get disappointed. So again, I brushed it off and I chose to, you know, just enjoy job bag for the remaining few hours I had because I was flying out the following morning. So yeah, we were staying at some very pretty place called Monte Casino. It, it, it looks very it has like a lot of european influence i think i'll just put photos it looked very nice um and the hotel i was staying at like had a what do i even call it like a food court area with a water fountain yeah so i went there and like bought myself something to eat and drink and just take take it all in the fact that i have traveled to south africa the fact that I have flown for the first time and it was it was amazing and 
everything was catered for it was a very a moment of gratitude to be honest and i remember in that moment i was i felt like even if i don't get the job i would be content i would be content because that experience in itself was enough for me like it was enough for me it felt like a, an escape from what was going on in my real life i fly back on to the wednesday and uh when i land a friend a family friend and who picked me up and mom and dad were in hospital dad was having chemo so mom was there with him so the family friend picked me up and then now we went to pick up my my mom and dad and my phone call was scheduled for that same time like the schedule like maybe an hour and a half after i landed so by the time i land clear customs whatever leave the airport go to nairobi hospital um, to pick in a mom by that time the one and a half hours has like already elapsed i dialed into the meeting while in the car beside my dad who was not feeling very well for anyone who's 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 experienced um cancer and what chemotherapy does to the patient you would understand when i say he was not at his best so i remember i was seated in the car this if this moment does not describe this story in its entirety i don't know what will because this is like the moment where i'm talking about that disconnect between my life and whatever else is going on <laughs> it was like two extremes anyway so on, on my beside me is my dad he's unwell he's just had chemotherapy he's feeling not very well he's nauseous he's throwing up and here i am on this phone call and i've just logged in and the hr lady is very enthusiastic and she's asking me um did you did you get back home safe and i'm like yes i just landed i'm on my way home now and she's like oh i'm very pleased to tell you that the interviewers really loved you and they would love to make you an offer and she goes on in fact like i think after she told me they would love to make you an offer i completely i phased out i don't think i had anything else she said because she threw a lot of numbers at me she threw timelines at me that i couldn't even say back to the people who was telling the news afterwards <laughs> so anyway i'm sitting there with my earphones on listening to her telling me about compensation and leave days and i don't know for for 1k match and i don't know stock awards um and timelines for the visa i, I don't know <sighs> and beside me my dad is throwing up <laughs> oh my Like sometimes when I when I when I look back at how I got here, I mean, I don't even know how to describe how that moment felt. To be honest, I, I don't know how to describe it. It felt like it felt like it wasn't my life. It wasn't my real life. Anyway, so I get off the phone call. and she tells me she will email me all those details because um in fact she even asked me are you excited you don't sound excited <laughs> and i'm like yeah i'm just in shock <laughs> and she's like okay that's, that's understandable and i'm i'm, I'm sure you, you probably didn't grasp all the things i threw at you so i'll send you a follow up email with all the details and she said she didn't send me like a, a mock of a letter so I, I, i can read through all the terms and take it all in and i really appreciated that so i get up off the phone call and of course um, it was a family friend at the front driving my mom at the front then me and my dad so i got off the phone call and since i wasn't talking much during the phone call they didn't know what happened so i take off my earphones And of course I got curious. I'm like, "Oh, what happened? What happened?" And I'm like, "Um, so I got the job." <laughs> I think that's when it hit all of us that I would be moving. I would be moving across continents. 
it took us a while before we we processed the news and now began getting excited about it anyway so i texted my sister about it i'm like oh yeah i got the job she's like yeah i knew it <laughs> she's always very confident in me by the way shout out hi sister hello <laughs> uh yeah we get home and yeah by the time we get home i have been sent the the sample of a letter that has all the details that she was telling me um she sort of like sent me like a visa timeline sort of thing and we go over the the offer letter and we are looking at numbers that we have never seen in our entire life and i was basically overwhelmed i did not know what to think what to feel what to say what to what to do what yeah it was a, it was an intense moment so that was december when i got my offer uh a little later in december i graduated a hey, first class honors top of my class what mm. <laughs> i had to put that in there actually i didn't but it's nice to celebrate yourself i actually never celebrate myself but yeah <laughs> so i graduated and then in january is when i signed the official offer letter i signed the offer letter online and then between feb and march there was a lot of paperwork going on there were a lot of emails lots of questionnaires to be filled lots of documents being sent back and forth and then in april that's when they filed for my h1b visa in may first week of may i got my approval notice which is confirmation that you have been selected in the lottery so the h1b visa has a cap there's a limited number of people who can be awarded the h1b visa in a given calendar year but the people who apply for it are more than that number so what they do is they, they have like a lottery to pick that number that they want so when you're picked in the lottery like they give you the approval <laughs> notice to tell you oh yeah you are picked in the lottery so yeah so i was picked in the lottery we thank god for that um and then in may i'm also like kind of left you out from <laughs> every other thing that was going on in my life at that point um uh, my dad was still sick he was he was going through medication and that was taking a toll on me in ways i can't even explain it's a very depressing thing when a loved one is going through pain and you can't take it away i, I don't know how to explain it it's it's just it was just it wasn't a nice experience i wouldn't wish it on anyone i wouldn't wish it on anyone and that was the second time i was experiencing cancer in my family I wouldn't wish it on anyone fast forward to me i've gotten the approval notice about the lottery and i'm still interning at the company i was at this point and then um my dad has just finished his first rounds of chemo and he's looking like he's getting better the cancer is shrinking in size like we're all very optimistic you know like we are pulling ourselves out of that dark dark hole that we have we had sunk in and then out of nowhere end of may 30th of may to be precise in the morning things happen before you know it i'm we are rushing my dad to hospital i'm the one who's driving we get to hospital and yeah 30th of may so my dad rested on 30th of may in the morning and to be honest my life has never gone back to normal ever since I have not recovered from the events of that of that morning. I Anyway, so that was that was me and that loss made me question so many things, so many things, so many things in my life including moving abroad because he had been working abroad for a very long time and he was just about to retire and come back home and you know stay with us you know like how the family reunited and then 
just a year before his retirement, all this happens and then he's suddenly gone. So that made me question so many things. I'm like, do I really want to move abroad? Is it worth it? What if I die there away from family? Just a lot of dark thoughts, to be honest. I still have them once in a while. Anyway, let's go back to the the recruitment story. So I've gotten the approval notice in May. Nothing happens between June and July because it's like waiting for them to process the thing and approve or reject it. So in August, Microsoft applies for premium processing for the visa because it, not, it, it was taking too long and my start date was scheduled for October 7th. So they applied for premium processing in, in August and in a week, we had the results back in and it was approved. Whew, that was like another thing that was giving me stress. I was like, okay. By this point, a few people in my life knew about the job offer, but I also, also wasn't broadcasting it because what happens if you don't get the visa and you've told a million people that, oh my God, I'm moving for this job. I'm moving abroad. I'm moving for this job. And then it just <laughs> vanishes into thin air. So I was keeping it on the low low as best as I could. Although they had like backup plans in case the visa gets rejected. They were gonna um, move me to Canada and apply for the Canada visa, which is a lot easier to get than the US one. So there was like backup plans, but then I still didn't want to over expect. Again, like I've told you, the common theme of all this, I, I don't like over expecting because that leaves me like it leaves me in a in a delicate place where disappointment can crush me. By this point, I think after I got the approval notice in May, that's now when it began sinking that I'm going to move. That's when I began Googling, where is Redmond? <laughs> and looking at Redmond on the map. I began looking at apartments and, you know, a bit of dreaming about what type of apartment I'd want. But I'd still, you know, um, regulate myself to not dive into that world too much before the visa gets approved. So once it got approved in, in August, everything else has begun moving pretty fast. <laughs> It was like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so it got approved in August. I had my visa interview at the the consulate, the US consulate, the embassy in Nairobi. That I think was that was mid September. I served notice at work. It was like a farewell party. I had to shop around for a few things, booking flights, things like that, things like that. And before I knew it, um, it was October 1st and that's when I flew out and moved here and I began my job on the 7th of October. It's wild because it's almost been one year. Ha! Huh. Anyway, looking back, this story definitely changed my life in many ways and the things that happened during that one year also changed my life it was just a period of a lot of life-changing events so many life-changing events happened in a short period of time like i told you becoming an aunt graduating um, moving abroad for this job losing my dad so many things happened in a very short period of time that i think I didn't have to, time to process it all and now living here alone and being alone with my thoughts <laughs> it's not the healthiest thing to be honest yeah and this this year where i've been working here living here has also been another dramatic year i mean just look at 2020 and the things that 2020 has done <laughs> Oh, that should be another video to be honest because yeah moving abroad has definitely changed me so yeah that was now a year ago um, it's almost october 1st when i'm filming this it's 27th of september it's going to be almost a year since i moved which is wild completely wild to think <laughs> it's already been a year since i moved 
Whew. But anyway, if there's anything I'd like you guys to take away from this video, it would be three things. One, life is short. Life is short and you need to live it. You just can't go about your days just existing, just surviving. You need to be living. You need to be living. You need to be living. Don't postpone joy. Don't postpone living life because, yeah, it isn't guaranteed and life is short. Number two would be put yourself out there. Yes, <laughs> put yourself out there. Be bold enough to suck at something new, which is normally the thing that I put on my end card at, at the end of every video. Be bold enough to suck at something new. Put yourself out there. You never know. You never know where it takes you. You never know what sticks. If I hadn't casually applied for this job back in August without thinking too much about it, I wouldn't be here. And then number three, it's just to be grateful, to be grateful about everything, the good, the bad, the in between, the confusing, the, the things that make you afraid. Just be grateful, just be grateful, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Don't take anything you have in your life for granted. Be grateful about everything. And also, I would like to say that I am here, I am where I am because of the favor of God. There's no other way to rationalize this. It's like, yes, I was qualified, yes, I had good grades, yes, I applied for the job and I gave it my best shot. But some things are beyond even what you would anticipate. And to me, this opportunity is one of those. It was beyond anything I could have done by myself. It was beyond. This is not my doing. This is not my doing. This is not my doing. It is not my doing. It is not my doing. It is beyond anything I could have done. I was I was prepared, but then God came and took my preparation and He graced it with favor and and now that's that's this. So yeah. That was a deep story, huh? <laughs> ah, anyway, um, that's the story of how I got my job at Microsoft and how I ended up moving. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you got to know me a bit better. I hope me being vulnerable inspired you to go after the things you love, to be grateful about the things you have. Thank you for watching. If you have any other video that you want to see on this channel, let me know in the comment section below. If you feel inclined to, smash the like button, share the video with a friend if you think it might inspire them. Okay, I think I'm gonna go cry now. This story has reminded me about a lot of things that I haven't dealt with and I think I just need to go have one nice long cry, let it all go, and then move on with my life before the next time when I need to cry. Okay guys, <laughs> let me go cry. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.